Hello and welcome to Web Application Performance 101. This is primarily a presentation for Foglet users and implementers. However, this first 101 section, this may be interesting for most anybody interested in web application performance. So let's go ahead and get started. HTTP is what we call a request response protocol. And basically this means that a user or a calling system can issue a request to some server and that server responds back with some information. Okay, what we're really interested in here for application performance management is what happens in between that request and response. And that's our big focus for this presentation. So let's start off with a very basic question, and I hope everybody can answer this by the time we're done with this presentation. How many interactions does it take to pull up a web page? So the request is in an interaction and a response is in an interaction. Okay, in order to dig more on that question, let's start with a pre performance test or a pretest on page performance. Are there just two interactions for that page view like we talked about the request and the response? The answer there is no. A page request is just the shell or the outer container but a page request typically references all these other elements to fill its content in. Graphics, style sheets, JavaScripts, even different things from social media sites get pulled into that page depending on what the developer wrote in there to access. So does a web page get all of its content from one server? And No, not typically, and this is especially true on internet app applications. Most of the time there are several servers contributing to the content of that page. And like I said before, there's social media plugins, there's web accelerations. Behind the, behind the scenes of a web page that seems pretty simple to an end user, there's a lot going on. So the other thing besides multiple servers filling in that web page, we also have to look at all the different connections. So it's not one connection, like if we're using yahoo.com, for example, there's not one connection to the yahoo.com website. There might be 30 connections. Just, just for one page, for one user, there may be 30 different TCP connections that are working in parallel to fill that page in as quickly as possible. So now we have multiple connections. We have multiple servers. We have a lot of different content types all flowing into that page. All right, so let's look at a typical web page and kind of summarize the questions there. So on these, what we typically do, this is one web page. And what I'm representing here is all the different connections that go out. And this is a simplified version. I'm going to show you a, a, a realistic example here in a minute. But usually where you're going to have these connections and get main.html will we'll go back to the origin server. So in this case, Yahoo, we use as an example. So this is Yahoo.com. And then Yahoo.com starts responding with these, these different uh, requests that fill in the content of the page. So here's two connections to the origin server and like I said a very simplified example. And then connection three, this is an ad server maybe that's pulling a banner ad down for that get main.html page and there's also acceleration servers that are filling in things like images um, in order to and static content even JavaScript come back from those acceleration servers. So this way it saves the trip back to origin and also takes the load off the origin servers. So you put all your static content out here and you just restrict your origin servers to giving back dynamic content, things that change all the time. Okay, so that's a typical web page and what's going on. So hopefully I painted a good picture for you here. Now let's go and look at a real example so that we get a better idea of what goes, what goes on once somebody clicks on that request button in their browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a typical example here, a, a pretty... Um, this is an e-commerce app called ATG, and it's a very popular e-commerce application for large e-commerce sites. And uh, e-commerce is pretty common, so I thought this would be a good example for us to use. And what I'm doing is I'm loaded a Chrome browser here, and this I recommend you go as a next step to this presentation. Actually, go download Chrome if you haven't, if you don't have it on your desktop already, and just take a look. Go to Tools and go to your Developer Tools. This is a very useful tool set for you to have. Uh, especially when you're first learning about web application performance. So I want to click, uh, once I pop that open, you, you probably want to expand this. I, I have it taking up about half my page just for this example. But you want to click on the network one. And this is the only tab we're going to talk about today. So what I want to do is I'm going to reload this page up top. And what you'll see is all of the different information. Just like in our example on the PowerPoint, this one web page has all these different pieces. And it's, it's not uncommon to have 120, maybe 150 different elements in one page. 
So in this case, Home US started it all. So this is my shell or outer container. It's an HTML container. And then that container fills in all these other pieces. So if we look, 10.169, this is my main server. And it's actually an IP address here. This would be yahoo.com, like in our example. And then if you come down, you'll see some other servers here. So there's some other servers serving a lot of content back into this web page that has nothing to do with 10.169.156. Now, if we look at the actual performance, this is represented here in what a lot of people in the industry call a waterfall, or I think it's um, its real name, this would be a Gantt chart. So basically what this is doing is showing the rendering of this item over time. So in this case, if I put my cursor over here, you can see the waiting was 23 milliseconds. So that waiting, that's the initial response time back from the web server. So it waited for 23 milliseconds before 10.169.156 served back its first piece of information. And then after that, it went into receiving mode. Now this blue line here, this is actually when the content starts loading. So the content started loading a little bit after half a second is when the content started loading back into the page. And then you'll see down here this red line here. This is what we call the load event fired. So that means that the page can start being used by the end user. And that was a little bit here after about 1.08 seconds. So you can see all these different pieces now uh, as they came in. And each one on here gives you a different time. So blocking means that it was waiting for something else in the web page to finish before it could start. But you'll see here that, as we talked about before, my connections to this site, all of these things are happening at the same time. So all of these are on different TCP connections back to the server. Now what we're very interested in is we want to know here, we want to know when the user clicked the button to start that home US, and we want to know when that last thing happened all the way down here in the red line, we want to know when that page finished. Not only do we want to know that, but we want to somehow look at all of this information, these hundred and something hits. We want to know how much of that page was spent processing on the back end of the web server and how much of the time was spent on the network. And then we want to know how much time was spent on the client. So that's what we're looking at with a web sniffer. It's actually seeing all this information coming in and we want to make sense out of that so we can tell you where the time is really being spent on it. Okay, so we're going to revisit these in, in subsequent presentations, but let's go back to our PowerPoint now and let's actually have a look at the um, what, a, what a sniffer sees. So now we get to monitoring and we're doing production monitoring. We're not in a web browser like I just showed you where we're actually pulling that information up. But what we're, watch, we're monitoring thousands and thousands of pages with a sniffer. So the sniffer here sees these origin server information. So it cannot see anything coming from the client or the acceleration server because these are outside the network. So really what we're looking at is all these different points here. What we want to see is we want to see one to four. We want to know the end to end time like I just showed you in that we want to know when somebody clicked on that first byte and when somebody got the last byte back into their browser. But what we actually see is we see two and three. We see the first packet come here across the sniffer and then the sniffer knows when that last packet went out. So we have to estimate, we have to estimate one and two and three and four. And we estimate this in the sniffer by looking at the response time of what we call acknowledgement packets. So when this when something goes back from the web server, there's acknowledgements that go back and forth here. So this is basically an estimate at the sniffer to get you end to end time and what we call network latency. Okay, or network time in this example. All right, the last thing I just want to briefly touch on instrumentation. We'll cover this more detail later. But with instrumentation, you see the first page come in. So it, it knows this time. And it also knows when the last P comes back into the browser. So instrumentation is different because it's running in the browser. And we also know all these different times when these pieces leave, but we don't know when they come back. So where a sniffer gives you every single piece, every single hit, you can only see with the instrumentation in the browser you can only see when they left so you don't know the parallelism of each of the requests so this includes our first part our 101 introduction and we'll follow it up with some more advanced lessons on web application performance thank you very much for attending